I see a lot of comments left by people, especially here on YouTube, about、uh, life and how it could evolve. When I point out things about the properties about of DNA to them, some of the properties of DNA,、uh, the the complexity of it, the stupefying complexity of DNA. You know what I get? I get atheists who say, "Man, DNA is not that complex. It's just a simple string of nucleotides. I can reproduce that in a lab." Are you nuts? Nobody can reproduce DNA. DNA is the most complex thing known to man. Do you know what the most complex thing ever devised by man is? It's the code for Microsoft Windows. And guess what? DNA is more complex than that. Yeah, in a laboratory they can devise, they can build with intelligent design a couple of nucleotides and make a little string of nucleotides. What does that prove? That proves that it takes intelligence to create life. Of course, they didn't create life. They just got a couple of nucleotides. They manufactured them, by the way. But is that DNA? No, that's not DNA. That possesses none of the characteristics of DNA. So now things get a little bit more complicated. But we'll start off with a fairly simple example that proves that Neff doesn't know what he's talking about. One YouTuber commented on his video saying, "Human beings have already created a synthetic cell using artificial DNA. Blah blah blah. You're an idiot, etc." Nephilim Free responded. We have not created DNA. We have created a string of nucleotides, but this does not qualify as DNA because it does not contain information. Blah blah blah. You're an idiot, etc.
I think that Nephilim 3 needs to realise that DNA is simply a molecule. Whether or not it contains any information is entirely incidental. In any case, here's the man who headed up the experiment in question, and Neff had better be hoping that he doesn't watch this video, otherwise there could be some pretty angry phone calls. His team synthesised, from scratch, information and all, the entire genome of Mycoplasmium genitalium, inserted it into a cell, and hey presto it grew! To prove that they had really done it themselves, they also included a series of watermarks, written in their own uniquely devised code. So what has Neff got to say next? Where's the information? Where's the algorithms? Where's the, the sequences of information? Where's the overlapping and embedded information? Oh yeah, evolution could have made uh, DNA. It's a so simple, man. <laughs> DNA's supporting systems use algorithms to store and retrieve mo uh, information from the molecule. DNA molecule is comprised of information. That's all it is. From one end to the other. Information. You cannot find them anywhere in nature. Algorithms are a product only of intelligence. Information is a product only of intelligence. False statement one. Natural processes cannot create new information. Only minds can create codes. There are three problems with this statement. A. What the heck is information? How do you define it? There are classical definitions, but they don't apply to the vague way he's using them. There are some metrics for information, like Shannon or Kolmogorov, but they apply to very specific criteria, not global genetic content. Specified complex information, a term invented by William Dembski, is not scientifically testable or relevant in real science. B. Instead of the meaningless term genetic information, let's use the term genetic complexity, which we'll define as the number of novel functions encoded in the genome. Genetic complexity can and is increased by natural processes, primarily through the duplication of existing DNA sequences. Two identical gene sequences have the same basic complexity as a single gene sequence. However, with the very first functional modification, we suddenly have an increase in genetic complexity. The organism now has a new gene with a new function and therefore a new phenotype. We see this particularly in gene families, a series of genes that are, say, 90% or more identical in sequence, but with different functions. For a specific example, take the hemoglobin that makes your blood red. There are at least 12 distinctive types of hemoglobin in humans, and they're controlled by a series of closely related genes. Some are only expressed in the fetus, others are hereditary in only certain populations of people. So a simple gene duplication or change in number of chromosomes followed by natural changes in DNA sequence create additional genetic complexity. C. All codes are the result of mind, he says. That's true, but he's begging the question on several levels. All known codes, except for DNA, are in fact codes created by human minds. It seems unlikely that DNA was the result of a human mind, therefore it is the exception. We don't have any examples of non-human codes other than DNA. It would be inappropriate to say that since DNA is not a human code, it must therefore be a code created supernaturally by an all-powerful, invisible being. I can't say that because all swans I've ever seen have been white, therefore any animal which looks like swans but are not white must therefore not be swans. There are in fact black swans, but they are the exception to the all swans are white conclusion we arrive at by inductive logic. Likewise, all codes are human codes, the product of human minds. However, DNA is the exception to that inductive conclusion. There is no reason for us to discount exceptions to inductive conclusions, except a closed mind or massive headphones that filter out logic. Uh, Furibuchi, uh, I think is how you pronounce it. Curves, these are not uh, algorithms. That's just a pattern. You see, evolutionism, evolution could never in a trillion, trillion, zillion, billion, trillion, thousand, trillion, billion, trillion, zillion, million, trillion, thousand, billion, trillion, zillion years ever produce 
a DNA molecule. It's impossible. It's a product of intelligence. DNA stores information in embedded and overlapping sequences. If my finger were a sequence of information in the DNA molecule, there may be another one that overlaps it, that shares nucleotides. Embedded sequences also exist. Hey, but guess what? Instead of just one overlapping, there may be many that overlap. DNA also uses embedded sequences. If this were a sequence in, in DNA, there may be a sequence within it, and another within it, and another within it. And guess what? Some of those might be overlapping. Intelligence. Intelligence. Intelligent design. Okay? These, re let's say this represents the base pairs, the, uh, I mean, the nucleotides, A, C, G, and T. In okay. DNA, okay? But I have, just for a illustration's sake, A, C, G, T, A, C, G, T, I like that. Yep, okay? still with you. This represents strand one and strand two of the DNA double helix molecule. Hang on. What? I had to re-watch this part of the video to make sure I hadn't misunderstood anything. But no, Nephilim Free really does believe that in DNA, A pairs with A, C pairs with C, and so on. This is something that any high school student could tell you is wrong. In fact, it's something that anybody who has been to Wikipedia can tell you is wrong. I'd like to see how he defends this mistake, because in the Computing with DNA manuscript that he cites, there is a section devoted to the chemistry of DNA with a very simple explanation which clearly states that A always pairs with T, and C always pairs with G, with the exception of a very special situation, which I'll look at in another video, and isn't relevant here. There was even a diagram to make it absolutely clear. Oh well, at least he didn't eat the paper this time. Let's see what else he's got. Say that there is a sequence in DNA that says, that is coded A, C, G, T. It's a rather short sequence, but we'll roll with it for now. There may be another one. On the same nucleotides, that's, that's coded C, T, A, T. Do you see what I mean? Overlapping sequences to share nucleotides. Oh god, it just got a whole lot worse. It's true that you can get different products from the same stretch of DNA by processes such as differential splicing. It's also true that certain viral genomes have overlapping genes. This is because viral genomes need to be very small. But I don't know of any evidence whereby you can produce new sequences simply by skipping out individual nucleotides. If you can find some evidence for it in the scientific literature, then I'd be very interested to read it. And if it's something that you've just discovered, then I should drop your YouTube channel immediately and get publishing, because it's almost certainly worthy of a Nobel Prize. But not only that, they might share base pairs, both, or just one nucleotide in a base pair. I don't like where this now, is going. Guess more fun. There may be a sequence in DNA that says A, C, G, T, A, C, A, C, G, T. Strand hopping. Do you see that? I don't think I can stand much more of this. If it's possible just to jump around like this, then why not simply have these four bases as the entire human genome, and then pick them out according to whichever combination you want at the time? Both strands can come into play for things like transcription factor binding sites, but that's about it. Certainly in coding sequences, only one strand is ever used. Why can't both strands be used for coding sequences? Because the two strands run in opposite directions to each other, and enzymes that read DNA can only read in one direction or the other. Hey, but let's not stop there. DNA conforms to linguistics law. Not only within its sequences, but the entire molecule from end to end. Linguistics is a product of intelligence. <laughs> you see, evolutionism doesn't qualify as science. Evolution qualifies as a concept only, has no supporting facts. It was never science from the beginning, it's not science today. It's based on denialism, denial of God and his moral law, because they must deny there is an intelligent designer, a creator. That is the reason evolutionism exists today. Now I want to read something for you from Conservapedia's remarkable article on the subject of evolution. Which, if you go and read and study some of the information therein, you'll find yourself scratching your head saying, Why do I believe this again?
Why do I believe this again? I promise you, you will. Yeah, I quote. In 1885, the Duke of Argyle recounted a conversation he had with Charles Darwin the year before Darwin's death. I said it was impossible to look at these without seeing that they were the effect and the ex and expression of mind. I shall never forget Mr. Darwin's answer. He looked at me very hard and said, "Well, that often comes to me with overwhelming force, but it's other times." And he shook his head vaguely, adding, "It seems to go away." How is this any different then from the 21st century statements of Richard Dawkins and other scientists who say, evolutionist scientists, who say that when they look at life, it appears to have been designed? Kenneth Miller states the same thing: appears to have been designed. And yet they turn around and say it's not.、Uh, it, it looks designed.、Uh, it couldn't be designed because there's. Uh, but it, it looks designed, but、uh, it couldn't have been designed. Double talk. It's crap. Don't believe in evolution. It's not science. It never was a truth. Break out of the hedge, Minnie. The brainwashing. They've been pounding this into your head. That. Evolution is true. You came from a mud puppy. That didn't happen, Sporty. Wake up. I'm a hero. 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 I'